2021 is going to be another busy year in space exploration with three spacecraft arriving at Mars in February, eight missions bound for the Moon, and others flying past Venus or launching to meet various asteroids. In February, all eyes will be on Mars and the arrival over a two-week period of spacecraft from three different nations. On February the 9th, the United Arab Emirates Hope spacecraft will go into orbit around Mars to study the planet's atmosphere. A week or so later, China's Tianwen-1 will arrive at the Red Planet. It consists of an orbiter, a lander and a rover. NASA's 2021 mission will also reach Mars in mid-February and, if all goes well, place a large rover called Perseverance on the surface. Jezero Crater, where Perseverance will touch down, is thought to be where there was once a deep lake more than three and a half billion years ago. It's the site of a large river delta in which flowing water is expected to have deposited sediments that would be ideal for preserving signs of past life if it had developed. A central goal of Perseverance will be to search for signs of ancient microbial life in an ongoing quest to learn about the past habitability of Mars. The rover has a drill to collect core samples of rock and soil, which will then be stored in sealed tubes for pickup by a future mission that will return them back to Earth for detailed analysis. Perseverance will also test technologies to help pave the way for future human exploration of Mars. Attached to the rover is a miniature helicopter called Ingenuity, which all being well will achieve the first powered flights on another world. Ingenuity is expected to fly up to five times during a 30-day test campaign early in the mission. Each flight, lasting up to three minutes, will be at altitudes from three to ten meters above the ground, with a maximum range from the rover of 600 meters. Another of our neighboring planets will be in the spotlight in February and again in October when NASA's Parker Solar Probe will make its fourth and fifth flybys of Venus. Over a period of several years, the spacecraft is using Venus's gravity to gradually shrink its orbit so that it can observe the Sun from extremely close range. But scientists are taking advantage of the flybys to investigate Venus's atmosphere about which there are many unanswered questions. Closer to home, the Moon is going to be the target of a number of spacecraft in 2021. First up in April will be NASA's Capstone, a small orbiter designed to help pave the way for a future Moon-orbiting international space station called the Lunar Gateway, which will play a major role in the plan to return humans to the Moon in 2024. In the summer of 2021, Astrobotic Technology, a private space robotics company, is expected to land its first spacecraft on the Moon. The Peregrine Mission 1 is a technology demonstrator which will operate for about eight Earth days from its landing site on Larcus Mortis, a flat plain in the northeastern part of the Moon. October will see the launch of another commercial lunar mission called IM-1, IM being the initials of the Houston-based company Intuitive Machines, which like Astrobotic is being funded by NASA. The IM-1 mission features the Nova Sea Lunar Lander, which will touch down near a collapsed lava tunnel in the ocean of storms, carrying a commercial cargo and five NASA-provided payloads. The landing site is one that was originally intended for the subsequently cancelled Apollo 18 mission. Towards the end of 2021, a flotilla of five CubeSats, miniature cube-shaped spacecraft, will head to the Moon on various missions. 
Three of them, NASA's Lunar H map, Lunar Flashlight, and Lunar Ice Cube, will investigate the possible presence of water ice on the Moon. Water, of course, will be a key requirement of future lunar settlements. There'll be two other lunar CubeSats provided by Japan's space agency. Aquilius will carry out experiments on Earth's plasmasphere and in low thrust trajectory control from a stable Earth-Moon Lagrangian point. Omotenashi is a semi-hard lander that will demonstrate low-cost technology to land and explore the lunar surface. These five small lunar missions are among 13 CubeSats which will be carried aboard the initial uncrewed test flight in November 2021 of NASA's Artemis program to return humans to the Moon. This flight will also involve the first launch of NASA's super heavy lift rocket, the Space Launch System, SLS. Another of the 13 CubeSats that will start its journey following the first SLS launch is the NEA Scout, designed to fly by a near-Earth asteroid. The tiny spacecraft will use a solar sail to propel it towards its target, which may be the very small asteroid known as 1991 VG, only about 10 meters across. Near-Earth asteroids are important because of their potential future use as a source of materials such as metals. Two other missions to asteroids are scheduled to take off in 2021. The first is the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART, due for launch in July. DART is designed to encounter the double asteroid Didymos and collide with the smaller of the two bodies in that system, known as Dimorphos. The object is to study how the collision affects the motion of Dimorphos so that scientists will have a better handle on how to successfully deflect an asteroid that in the future might be on a potential collision path with Earth. Finally in October, NASA plans to launch Lucy, a spacecraft on a 12-year mission to explore the Trojan asteroids that are clustered around two Lagrangian points, points of orbital stability, that are equidistant from the Sun and Jupiter. These Trojan asteroids are remnants of the earliest days of the solar system, when the planets were first forming. The name of the spacecraft comes from the fossilized human ancestor called Lucy by her discoverers, whose skeleton provided a unique insight into humanity's evolution. Likewise, the Lucy mission will greatly add to our knowledge of planetary origins and the formation of the solar system.